الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله حمدا يزيد ولا يبيد يا ربنا لك الحمد على نعمك ومكارم ومكارمك التي لا تعد ولا تحصى اللهم لك الحمد أنت نور السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن ولك الحمد أنت قيوم السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبد الله ورسوله صفيه وخليله خير نبي أرسله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا إخوة الإيمان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I wanted to speak today about the name At-Tawwab, which translates as the one who accepts repentance, or the relenting, or the ever-turning, he who turns. Tabayatubu literally means to make a 180 degree. And it's in this sense of turning that Allah Ta'ala uses his name, At-Tawwab, most frequently in the Qur'an. So the name derives from to turn, and literally it means the one who's constantly turning. Tawwabun fa'alun, in the active form, it's Allah Ta'ala is constantly turning. And at the most basic level, it means that the Lord, Ar-Rabb, turns to Al-Abd, the servant, who turns to him. So it's a reciprocal name. He turns to you, and you turn to him. You turn to him, and he turns to you. The name is evident, of course, in the heart of the ta'ib, the heart of the repenter, who turns to his Lord. And we receive the breezes of Toba in our life. You may remember a time in, in your life when you turned from a sin to an act of obedience, where you turned from a bad habit to a good one. Those are disclosures or unveilings of the name At-Tawwab on your heart, which then manifest or express themselves on your limbs. The name At-Tawwab, however, leaves its traces on everything in creation too. We're turning to a new year. It's the first Friday of 23 of the solar calendar. So that's the beginning of a cycle. And every cycle, every recurring succession of events, every new season, every rotation is a trace of the name at Tawab. Life after death, death after life, night after day, seasonal rotations, each unit and cycle of prayer, your daily routine, every Ramadan that comes and goes, every instant in life, in life really, is an act of turning to Allah Ta'ala. Whether active or passive, whether you're aware of it or not, the sun rises after it sets, and Allah Ta'ala's governance remains uh, controlling of his affair and there is no change in his sunnah there is a constant uh, rotation, a constant uh, renewal of efforts uh, a constant cyclical uh, motion in weather patterns and so these are ways in which you can recognize Allah Ta'ala's ways of turning in nature, in creation in yourself, in the heart and so on and we turn to him in many ways. Allah Ta'ala is the object of our turning and he turns to us in many ways and we are the object of his turning in many ways. We turn to him with different elements of our being. You turn to him physically when you face the Qibla. You turn to him with your heart when you orient yourself to him. You turn, to your, you turn to Allah Ta'ala with your mind 
when you start exercising tabdir, tabdir and using your rational faculty to learn how to improve your day or how to manage your affairs better in conformity with the commands of your Lord. These are different modes of turning to Allah Ta'ala that you do. When you turn to Him with your intellect, when your intellect tries to gaze at Allah Ta'ala, which is not possible, you find yourself in a state of wonder and perplexity. And He turns to you by proclaiming His inaccessible transcendence, His absolute oneness and his incomparability. If you haven't contemplated Allah Ta'ala, well, you haven't experienced this state of perplexity that the scholars speak about. That state of hayra and bewilderment, your inability to understand Allah Ta'ala, is an act of your intellect turning to him, and him turning to you with his tanzih, which is with his utter incomparability, and saying, that's as far as your intellect will go, when you turn to me with that. When you turn to him with your heart, for instance, in prostration, in your daily prayer, that's a turn, it's a tawbah of the heart to Allah Ta'ala, but not with the mind, just with the heart. And he turns to you with the name Al-Qarib. Wasjud Waqtarib. Draw close to me and draw nigh. Prostrate and draw nigh. So, when you turn to him with your mind, he turns to you with his names of transcendence and incomparability. When you turn to him with your lowliness and your heart, he turns to you with his names of intimacy and proximity. And he says, Wasjud waqtarib, prostrate and draw near. When you turn to him in obedience, Allah Ta'ala turns to you in mercy and in bestowal and in provision and in blessing with names such as Ar-Razzaq, or the one who rewards. When you turn to him in supplication, he turns to you in response, Ujib. And the best way to ensure that he will turn to you with the name Al-Mujib is to turn to him in what way? In a state of ittirar, in a state of needfulness, complete dependence and compulsion. Yujib al mutarra idha da'a. He will turn to you with the name Al-Mujib, the responder, on condition that you turn to him with your ittirar, acknowledging your dependence, your poverty, your need, your contingency, your inability to sustain yourself without his blessings. When you turn to him in distress, he does turn to you as well in deliverance, in relief. Allah Ta'ala is al mughif the one who delivers you from distress. So you turn to him in those states, and he turns to you with his majestic and beautiful names. And with, with each turn of heart, of mind, of body, of intention, Allah Ta'ala, you connect with him through the quality, uh, or through, you could say, the interface of the name at tawwab the ever-turning. Those who turn to Allah Ta'ala in supplication, He turns to them in bestowal, through the name Al-Wahhab, through the name Al-Mujib. Those who turn to Allah Ta'ala in distress, He turns to them through al mughif That's why it's at tawwab as I said in the beginning of the khutbah, that's why the name is emphatic. It's a constant, continuous, unrelenting, uh, reciprocal act of turning that continues. And you fluctuate in every state throughout your life in your journey back to your Lord from this moment to your grave. It's really just a succession of turnings. And sometimes you think you're turning away from Him. And you are in a certain respect, but you aren't in another. Because wherever you turn is the face of Allah Ta'ala. You're just turning to Him through the name the All-Encompassing, or you're seeking a name like the Avenger, something to wake you up, something like Shadid al Bach, the severe and assault, God forbid, or something like that. You're still turning to Allah because wherever He has no back, wherever you turn, there is the face of Allah. We, the believer, we want to turn to Allah Ta'ala through His names of mercy, of beauty, of gentleness, and reward so that we may be raised in, in level. But really, everybody is just turning to Allah Ta'ala. 
So the name is reciprocal. It's, it's, it's a dynamic between the servant and the Lord. And you can think of this name from the perspective of Allah Ta'ala being the only one in charge. That, وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ That he has power over all things. It's called Tawheed Al-Af'al, the oneness of Allah Ta'ala's acts. And when you think of it in that sense, you start seeing that your turn to him was actually his inspiration to you. And he inspired you to turn to him. And you stop even associating your turn to him as something that's coming from you, but actually a blessing from Allah Ta'ala as well. Hence, the tradition, there's a beautiful holy saying, Hadith Qudsi, where Allah Ta'ala says, My servant, I yearn more to meet you than you yearn to meet me. You seek me through my quest for you, and I seek you through, bo through both your quest and mine. I inspire you to turn to me, and I turn to you, and I sustain your turn, and I keep doing so, and I turn to you. Hence, Allah Ta'ala says in the Surah of at tawbah the Surah of Repentance, chapter 9 of the Qur'an, He turned to them, that they may turn to Him. Truly, God is the ever-turning, the ever-merciful. SubhanAllah, think about it. He turned to them so that they can turn to Him. So he initiates the turn, then you turn to him. Allahu Akbar. This reciprocal name is a beautiful name, and you can keep contemplating it and deriving knowledge and wisdom from it because it's a name of Allah Ta'ala. And it appears in the Quran in these various ways to wake you up, to jolt you, to remind you of the miracle that it is and the blessing that it is to be able to turn to Allah so that you take advantage of it when He blesses you with a taste of that name. In the Quran, in the Hadith of Al-Mustafa Ali, you observe fundamentally three turns, really. Uh, it's one way of trying to capture the nature of uh, the, the name at tawab in the Quran. The first tawbah, the most fundamental one, and perhaps the most frequently mentioned tawbah or turn to God in the Quran, is the turning to God in repentance from paganism, from idolatry, from sheer unbelief, to Abrahamic monotheism, to tawheed. And the turn of the Arabi, of the Bedouin Arab, to oneness, to submission, from, from Jahiliya to Islam, uh, is, is one that's described frequently. It's a turn from rebelliousness to obedience, or from disobedience to obedience. Rasulullah says, I was commanded to war against people until they say the Shahada. That is, until they turn from their pagan ways, from their idolatrous ways, to affirming the oneness of God and practicing the basic consequences <coughs> of that oneness and of his messengerhood, alayhi salatu salam, namely the five pillars. And so the repenter, ta'ib, in the Qur'an, turns from the idol to obedience in Allah. He turns from Allah to al-uzza, to Allah Azza wa Jalla, to Allah the Transcendent. And Allah Ta'ala obliges Himself to turn to the repenter who turns to Him in forgiveness and graceful forbearance because Allah Ta'ala is Al Afu, He is Al Rahim, He is the Partner, He is the Merciful. And so we turn away from sin and thus interact with Allah Ta'ala's name, the Partner. Uh, that sinner appeals to Allah Ta'ala's generosity by affirming his tawheed. 
This is the basic turn, the first turn. And it's a turn that we also need to keep doing as well, because in addition to the 360 idols surrounding the Kaaba, physically, the heart has plenty of idols that it turns to all the time. And so we consistently turn to Allah from those idols. And we try, to the best of our ability, to become monotheists. And we don't take it for granted. And we don't assume that we've perfected our monotheism by any means. And that's why there's a second turn in the Qur'an. Not only from sheer, um, just blatant idolatry and disobedience and so on, but to faith, to iman, from a turn from jahiliyyah to Islam, to submission or just commitment, and then a turn from that state of basic commitment to higher levels of faith. And so each turn of heart is a repentance that's accompanied by a certain aspiration that you're given, a certain himma that Allah Ta'ala inspires in you. The second turn is the turn from Islam, from commitment to Iman. Faith, sheer certitude, uh, strong, ineluctable certainty in Allah Ta'ala. The first toba is practiced, you could say, or tasted by the one who practices and commits himself or herself to the practice of the deen. The second toba from the station of submission to active cultivation of faith is when the heart really begins to taste faith. And Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu wa an nabihi, he describes and really captures this second toba, this second turn of heart. Um, having completed this station of faith, having affirmed that Rasulullah is more beloved to him than his own self, that Rasulullah says, at last, Umar, al-an ya Umar, you finally completed the second tawbah. You can finally claim iman. La yu'minu ahadukum. None of you believes, you're not, you're not a mu'min in the full sense of the term until I am more beloved unto you than he lists those things. I'll read the hadith for you so you can get a, a direct taste of this second um, tawbah, this second turn to Allah. Abdullah bin Hisham relates that the Prophet ﷺ was once holding the hand of Umar ibn al-Khattab when Umar said, Messenger of God, you're more beloved unto me than everything except my own soul. The Prophet ﷺ says, Nay, by the one in whose hand is my soul, not until I am more beloved to you than yourself. Umar said, Now by God you are indeed more beloved to me, unto, uh, unto me than myself. And the Prophet ﷺ says, at last, Umar. There are other versions of the hadith where he says, I'm more beloved unto you than your children, your parents, your offspring, your wealth, and so on. In other words, that's the second tawbah, the second true turn, the culmination of the second tawbah. We're in a different uh, sphere here. We're, it's a, this is a different classroom. This is grade two. Grade one is just going from you know, the idol to tawheed and basic, you know, the, the Arabi, the basic... Uh, uh, rough Bedouin Arab who goes to Rasulullah says, tell me what I can do to enter heaven. I won't do a, th a single thing more than that. He said, five pillars. And when he leaves, Rasulullah says, he's a small man, but if he does it, and he's not that great, he's in first grade, but even at that, he's not that impressive. But if he fulfills what he promised, he shall enter the garden. Here you have a second toba. I love you, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah doesn't say, MashaAllah, I love you too. I book up MashaAllah. He says, No, you don't believe until you love me more than yourself. He's, he's, he's shaking him up. He's waking him up. He's saying, This is the station of Iman. This is the next level. You're not, we're not, there's no mujamala, you know, niceties. We're not going to be exchanging niceties. I'm going to teach you what it means to graduate to Maqam al Iman. And Suratul Hadid is like that. If you read the Surah Al-Hadid, أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Right, the, those who, who've believed, the, isn't it time for their hearts to have khashya, to have fear of what has descended? And so on. It's, it's addressing the believer, that second category, those who have already made the first leap, the first turn to Allah Ta'ala, and are now trying to raise the bar to fulfill the second station of belief in Allah Ta'ala. It's the second turn. So read the Surah Al-Hadid as Allah Ta'ala addressing and helping the mu'min to come out of that, uh, you know, the lower echelons, the lower grades of second 
the second turn from f uh, submission to faith to actually achieve the station of, of Iman. But there's a third turn, and a few undertake it, but it's there, and it's the turn from the state of Iman to Ihsan, at the hands of a friend of Allah Ta'ala. And that's described in Surah Al-Kahf, where Sayyidina Musa alayhi as-salatu wassalam hears that someone is more knowledgeable than himself. And he's achieved the station of Islam. He is the station of Islam. He is the Sharia. He is the one. He's the law-giving, uh, legislating prophet. He is the one who knows what Iman is. And yet he's given khutbah. He thinks no one has been more has been given more knowledge than himself. And when he hears that, he, that, that there is someone, namely Sayyidina Al-Khidr ibn Abdullah, he turns his back to his messengerhood and his prophethood and the community that he built and the pharaoh that he drowned and the, the alwah that he was given. And he goes to detail. And it's a beautiful, uh, you could say, the, the, this anonymous abd brings Sayyidina, uh, Sayyidina Musa والسلام, through the previous phases of his life. Moses had killed someone, now Khidr does the same thing, but for Allah Ta'ala in a different way, not for his nafs. Moses alayhi salatu salam was in a basket, now he's going to puncture this vessel on the ocean. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu salam had volunteered for Shu'aib for all these years to work. It's the end of his, you know, the sunset of his life, he's at the peak. And Sayyidina al-Khidr builds a wall voluntarily. He does all these acts which Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu salam had done before, training him to look back into his life and to see uh, how one could revisit those actions and do them just for Allah Ta'ala and he fulfills his duty, he brings him, you could say, to the highest that he can bear, that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam can bear. And so the first tawbah is the tawbah of the Bedouin Arab, the Arab who is unable to, uh, who, who, who just turns from idolatry to submission and commitment. The second turn is the turn of the practitioner, the one who's committed and submitted to higher reaches of faith. And the third turn is really refining Ihsan, spiritual excellence, where one is just doing it for Allah Ta'ala. And you're just acting purely for Allah Ta'ala, having tasted what it means to really have faith in Allah Ta'ala. Now you really go out in to, so to speak, on the street, uh, literally, you know, the, uh, uh, you know uh, going out and practicing that faith and bringing it to the next level because Allah huwa tawab rahim So you can take this name and you can think about it in the Qur'an and you can, you, you can place it in your heart and read a surah and see what comes to you from it. For instance, Surah Yasin, if you're familiar with it, put this, the name at tawab in your heart and, and, and observe what, it's, what meanings you can draw from it if you can't connect to that surah. The surah begins with those who can't make tawbah. عَنَاقِمُ أَغْلَالًا فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَذْقَانِ فَهُمْ مُقْمَحُونَ Scenes of those who just have not been able to taste the turn to Allah Ta'ala. And then it turns from there to, to actually observing uh, what happens in this world, arguments in, in the village of those who are, who are turning against the messengers. إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ So, so you, you can go through every scene of, for instance, Surah Yasin and observe how the name at tawab uh, unfolds in that surah so that you can connect a bit to the Qur'an and uh, activate your heart and try to have it turn to Allah Ta'ala. Allahumma ja'alna min al-tawwabin wa ja'alna min al-mustaghfirin wa ja'alna min al-ta'ibin bi rahmatika wa zudika wa karamik ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma gfir lana wa arhamna wa hadina wa aafina wa afu anna wa arzuqna wa thabbidna ala shahadati wa tawfana muslimin Allahumma arhamna wa arham walidina wa arham man allamana وارحم من سبقنا بالإيمان وارحم أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واصبر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم واستر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم واحفظنا واحفظ والدينا يا كرم الكرمين يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين اللهم يسر ولا تعسر بجودك وفضلك وكرمك يا أكرم الكرمين يا رب العالمين اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين اللهم جد والطف برحمتك ولطفك يا كريم ويا رحمن ويا رحيم اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم 
ولا ذكر الله أكبر ولا ذكر الله أكبر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة